Long ago, when the pyramids were still young, Egyptian kings played a game of great and terrible power. Okay, let's just talk about the Millennium Items. First and foremost, there are seven Millennium Items. There's the puzzle, there's, <clears throat> there's the Millennium Puzzle, the Millennium Ring, the Millennium Eye, the Millennium Necklace, the Millennium Rod, Millennium Scales, and Millennium Key. Now, fun fact, as I was going through who owned the Millennium Items, I knew that Yugi owned the puzzle. I knew that Bakora owned the ring. I knew Pegasus owned the eye, the Shizu, the necklace, Merrick, the rod. But I couldn't figure out who owned the key. Well, correction, the key was owned by Shoddy. And, but I couldn't figure out who the scales belonged to. That's when I did some research. Shoddy owned both the scale and the key. At separate times. So, why are the Millennium Items so important in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh? And what, what abilities do they have? Well, let's start with the Millennium Key. As we saw in... As we saw when Shadi first came on the scene in in Yu-Gi-Oh, he does the same thing in Season Zero. He also has the scales in Season Zero, which I will get to. Um, it allows Shadi to invade somebody's mind. He just unlocks it, well, he puts the key on the forehead of the person and turns it, unlocking their mind to him. It also allowed him to unlock the blue-eyes white dragon when attempting to vanquish the dark magician up until a door opened out of it opened at the request of Yugi Shadi also own owns the millennium scales now out of all seven of the millennium items I I, I was wondering which one is the strongest which one is the weakest in my opinion the scales are the weakest. Simply because all the scales allow... All it grants the user is the ability to measure someone's, someone's amount of darkness. The reason why the scale couldn't become anywhere close to balance or couldn't even... Couldn't even come up with a direct. Couldn't measure the amount of darkness in the thief, which would become Bakora, which would become Grandmaster Zork. Um, is because he just had so much darkness that the scale couldn't make heads or tails of it. So let's go on to the Millennium Rod. The Millennium Rod is owned by... Well, it... 
let's get this out of the way right now. Both the Millennium Rod and the Millennium Necklace were owned by the Yoshizus. Well, Yoshizus? Yeah. The Ishtars. There we go. Now, how, you may be asking, if it was owned by the Ishtars, who were the tomb keepers of the pharaoh Atim, how on earth did Merrick get his hands on it? Well, Merrick didn't want to become a tomb keeper to begin with. In fact, it's stated in the dub that he resented the Pharaoh simply because he never, ever wanted... He didn't want to follow in his family's footsteps and wait, on, and wait for eternity on the Pharaoh because he never thought he'd come. So after Ishizu takes Merrick to the outside world where there's television and motorcycles. They come back and realize that they tripped an old-time alarm, alarm system. And Merrick's father is beating the tar out of Odeon. So, Merrick, specifically Yami Merrick, took the Millennium Rod, and in the dub it said they, he sent, Merrick sent the, Merrick sent his father, father to the Shadow Realm in, well, in the sub it says, yeah, in the original, it says that Merrick just straight up killed his father and took the Millennium Rod. The, now, the Millennium Rod allows Merrick to mind control people like we saw with Joey and Strings and... Loomis, Seeker... Taya. But it also gives the user the ability to see into to get glimpses of the past. Now you may be saying that can't be. That's the Millennium Necklace. Well, in the duel, during the Battle City Finals, when it was Ashizu versus Kaiba, Ashizu, now let, I'm going to move on to the Millennium Necklace while still talking about the Millennium Rod. The Millennium Necklace allows Ashizu... <laughs> To see into the future. That's how she was able to, pre to predict every single move of the duel between her and Kaiba. However, the Malin however, Kaiba didn't believe in what he referred to as hocus pocus and all this magic stuff and everything of that nature. What What Ashizu saw in her future was that she was going to win by Kaiba using Soul Exchange to tribute off her three monsters and summon Obelisk the Tormentor. And, but she had, she had. Blast of a trip Blast of a Tribute set. 
which somehow had already implanted the the bomb, which translate ve- translates very well into the Japanese, which it's not, which in English it's tribute. Blast of a tribute. Well, it's uh, I be- I believe the Japanese is tribute. Tribute held by a bomb or something like that. Now, this is where the Millennium Rod comes in. The Millennium Rod shows Kaiba to play the Blue Eyes White Dragon. So, Kaiba ends up summoning the Blue Eyes White Dragon and ending the duel for Ishizu and Ishizu gives her necklace to Yugi because it's useless to her. Just like how Merrick gave Yugi the rod, actually Yugi ends up being the owner of all seven Millennium items. Meaning that the duel between him and a Tim, well, Yugi and a Tim, can can come to fruition. And we all know how that ended. So that's why I say that the rod can see into the... Well, can give somebody... Can give them a glance into the future. Or past, as it, as it were. Now let's move on to the Millennium Eye. The Millennium Eye was owned by Maximilian Pegasus, but then it became... Well, technically, I think... Well, technically, how Pegasus got it was he was on... He was in... E- he was on a... It, let me get my words right. He was on a trip to Egypt. Well, actually, he was already in Egypt, and he stumbled upon Shadi. And Shadi shoved the Millennium Eye right into Pegasus' eye socket. Now, the Millennium Eye grants the wielder... I'm going off the anime here, so the ability to see a person's hand, the ability to see what move they're going to take, and in Pegasus' case, take someone's soul. Or, in the case of Ghost Kaiba, bring somebody, bring a part of somebody's soul out of the shadow realm. Now, after the duel with Pegasus, Pegasus was exhausted because he released the souls of Solomon Modo, Mokuba, and Seto Kaiba. However, that didn't stop Bakora from coming in. Well, Yami Bakora from coming in and taking. Well, and dueling Pegasus on the dual field of their minds. And when Pegasus lost, uh, Bakora, unlike the dub where Croquet just says. Master Pegasus will be fine. He's just... He's just very tired. Um... Bakura, who is also known as the Thief, who is also known as Grandmaster Zork, uh, (laughs) he yanks. He just plucks the Millennium Eye right out of what used to be the eye socket. 
of Pegasus. So you heard me right. Yami Bakura just took the eye and yanked it out of Pegasus's face. Now, let's talk about the Millennium Ring. The Millennium Ring allows, well, let's first say who it's owned by. It's owned by Bakura. But unlike the Millennium Ring, Millennium, well, I don't even know if the Millennium Rod, no. I was thinking that the Millennium Rod held the spirit of Yami Merrick. But Yami Merrick was, was made out of the resentment that Merrick felt towards his Tomb Keeper duties. So unlike the Millennium Puzzle that holds a Tim, who is all good, for the most part, if you don't, if you don't include Season Zero, the Millennium Ring, Bakora's father gave it to Bakora. Bakora started wearing it. And it wasn't until Duelist Kingdom that we found out that the spirit of the Millennium Ring isn't isn't like a Tim at all. The spirit of the Millennium Ring wants all seven Millennium items, but he only wants them for power. He's a thief. He's a, as he says, he is a, he is a collector. So, what does the Millennium Ring grant the user? Well, the Millennium Ring grants shadow powers. The Millennium Ring hones in on an item that it wants as seen in the episode where uh, Bako I think it was Yugi that said that well I think it was mm, sorry about that I think it was Yugi that mentioned to Bakora that his Millennium Ring was glowing. And it was pointing straight up to the castle. And what was in the castle? The Millennium Eye. So the ring wanted the Millennium Eye. Or the thief did. Now, the thing about the Millennium Puzzle that makes... Well, the Millennium Ring different from the Millennium Puzzle is you really can't get rid of the thing. Yami Bakura... No, Yami Bakura... made a man-eater bug come to life. But then after that... I forget how Bakora became unconscious, but he became unconscious, and Tristan found him and threw the and threw the ring in the um into the thick forest that surrounded Dula's kingdom. So you think it's all over? Well, no. Because in Battle City, the ring makes its presence known again. During, during Battle City, Yami Bakura sends Bones and his two henchmen. Well, I think, yeah, he just kills them outright. 
in a duel. Not only that, but Bacora was in the hospital. Bacora was also on the blimp. And a Tim and Yugi are like, all right, who are you? And the ring appears. Out of nowhere. It just appears and the and the and Yami Bakura or the thief and oh a Tim, there we go. Start their duel. Up until Slifer is summoned. And when Slifer is summoned, Yami Bakora just goes, Nope. And changes back into Bakora. The only problem is, Bakora has a very injured arm. But, Yugi, a.k.a. Atim, is told to attack, otherwise he forfeits the match. And Merrick, along with Yami Bakora, are just like, ha-ha, you'll never attack, and then, well, he'll never attack his friend Bakora. And then Yami Bakora just, just goes, Merrick, this was a good plan. But I can't, I can't live without him. So the spirit comes back, allowing a Tim to win. You think that's where the story ends with the Millennium Ring? No. The Millennium Ring in the, uh, not the Waking the Dragons. But the Egypt Ark. Comes back again. This time, it's Zork. Zork gets defeated. You think it's over, but no! In the Dark Side of Dimensions movie, it comes back again. You cannot escape this Millennium Item to save your freaking life! Okay. So not only that, but... As we saw between Bandit Keith, who was being mind-controlled by Merrick to get the Millennium Puzzle, at the start of Battle City, Bakura, well, Yami Bakura finds the warehouse. Actually, the ring just leads just leads Yami Bakora to uh, to the warehouse where Bandit Keith, again, being mind-controlled by Merrick, and Yugi are dueling. And does anybody remember the line that Yami Bakora said? Okay, I'll tell you. He goes, rings, sever the strings that bind this man. So, the Millennium Ring can also, severed the connection between Merrick and Bandit Keith 
causing Bandit Keith to go crazy and blowing up the warehouse, leading to smoke inhalation between Yugi causing Yugi to be in the hospital. Now, let's talk about the Millennium Puzzle. The Millennium Puzzle is owned by Yugi. He worked on the puzzle for eight years, and for those eight years, he didn't... He didn't... He made progress, but he really didn't make any progress. As... So, the day comes where Yugi finishes the puzzle, and he gets the knowledge of a Tim. Not only does he get the knowledge of a Tim... He also gets the shadow powers of a Tim. The whole mind crush that a Tim spams throughout the anime between the kidnapper that kidnapped Taya and in well in the sub he had a camera. And given the position of the camera, you knew what was on his mind. But in the dub, they changed it to an, well, to a mugger. Tay gets knocked out. The mugger and a Tim play a game. And whoever draw drew the highest level of, well, whoever drew the highest card one. I forget what the mugger drew. Oh, he said, <laughs> check this out. He has a, this monster has a lot of attack points. And I think it was wing, wing, gar, uh, wing dragon guardian of the fortress. Meanwhile, a Tim just goes, I drew curse of dragon. Mind crush. Bam. Done. Kaiba, after he gets obliterated by Exodia, a Tim gives him the speech of, you only play for power, Kaiba, and that is why you lost. But if you put your heart in the game, there's nothing you can't do. Kaiba, open up your mind. Mind crushed him. Was there anybody else that attempt mind crushed? Thinking off the top of my head. I don't think so. But from from my research that I did, and this was all on the Yugi Yu-Gi-Oh fandom. And it bro it broke everything down. The puzzle gives the owner of the puzzle control over the Egyptian gods. I don't know if that's true or not. Because as we saw in the anime. While Yugi had Slifer and Merrick had Raw, those two had Millennium Items. Obelisk was owned by Seto Kaiba, and Kaiba did not... I mean, Kaiba's lineage, when we go back into the uh, ancient Egypt arc we see that uh, the powerful sorcerer 
has the Millennium Rod. So, there's that. But as it stands currently, Kaiba doesn't have a Millennium Item. So, that is who owned them. I still think the scales are the weakest. But what are their origin? Well, the origin of the Millennium Items goes like this. The King of Egypt, Atim's father, hears... Try, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Oh. <clears throat> Here's that there's going to mm, there's going to be an invasion of Egypt or something like that. And one of and one of uh one of a Tim's father's servants says or advisors says how about we make these talking about the millennium items and they do here's the thing when they created the millennium items it ticked off the Egyptian gods. And when... And when the Egyptian gods were not happy... Or the... Yeah. When the Egyptian gods weren't happy... Atim's father... Knelt down... Asked for protection for Atim... And... the Egyptian god struck him down. So, I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Hardcore Christopher. If you would like to become a member of our community, hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you ring the bell and click all for every time I upload a video. If you don't, it's okay. I still respect you. At the end of the day, I'm just glad that you chose to spend a little bit of your time here with me. And keep it hardcore, everyone.